This is Dmitry Balkovsky, and uh, I am introducing a new format, a uh, new name for the title for the program. And let me introduce uh, my colleague and a comrade in Golden Arms, Mr. Roderick McKenzie, originally from Scotland and now residing in the great uh, Russian city of Ufa in Bashkatarstan. Uh, and uh, Mr. McKenzie, he's a great in-depth expert on uh, Russian gold affairs. Uh, anything to do with gold in Russia, you should ask him. And I am, uh, I probably mentioned it before, I've been running a bullion dealership for, for a number of years in Moscow. So today, uh, and today is the 4th of November, 2022, we will be talking about gold and gold miners, uh, everything to do with gold in Russia. And we promise there will be, there will be no prisoners taken. So, uh, Mr. McKenzie, I pass, pass it on to you. Yeah, hi. Uh, it's good to be here, Dima, and I look forward to having a chat. I think that we uh, should start off uh, discussing the probably the major uh, figure in the gold industry uh, in uh, Russia, which is uh, Navalina, the central bank governor, who yes. seems to dominate the space uh, in either buying gold or making comments regarding gold. What yes. do you think? Uh, yeah. <sighs> Looks like she's uh, she, she's a bit stuck between two worlds, between two masters. On the one hand, she is uh, in Russia, from Russia, and she works for a Russian uh, state agency, which is, yeah, the, 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 there are arguments. That some people say that uh, Central Bank of Russia doesn't, um, uh, you know, doesn't, uh, isn't subject to Russian laws, but it's, it's not really true. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the organization that she is heading has been buying gold for a number of years, for, for many years, since like 2005 to 2020, uh, bought an, a, a mountain of gold, basically many hundreds of tons. Then they stopped in April 2020. And I often hear that uh, f from some Western uh, commentators, say, for, for example, uh, Alistair MacLeod, uh, yeah. he's been saying that she's a, She's some kind of a closet Austrian and all that, and uh, well, no, she she really isn't. I mean, she's a she's a Russian bureaucrat, you know. That the, the uh, Dima, I would agree with you there. Uh, as far as the Austrian school is concerned, she's certainly not an advocate of Friedrich Hayek. No, 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 no. Nor uh, von Mises. No, for sure. No, no, no. Uh, I want to mention just uh, two small things, basically, about her. She uh, on. On two occasions that I've noticed, at least, she said that gold is volatile, and that is why you do not want to buy gold if you're like a physical person, a regular guy, an, an average Russian. You don't want to buy gold because gold is too volatile, which is uh, it's, it's just not true. Absolutely. Mrs. Yes, yes. Correct. I mean, gold is about the least volatile instrument that you can hold. The most volatile instruments, as we know, uh, tend to be uh, actual physical fiat currencies, which is so you only have to look at the euro and the uh, British pound over the last four months to see uh, how volatile they are. They've both lost some 20% of their value in a very short time. Now, I've, I don't think we've ever seen gold lose 20% of its value uh, in such a short space of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, probably on, there was a couple of occasions, but it's like it's, it, it was an exception for sure. It was exception. And not at the, the price of gold now. You certainly are not going to see volatile swings. And as far as it not being for the everyday person, you and I are uh, both aware that uh, gold is probably the most valuable, simple asset to actually hold that actually holds its value rather than being volatile. And having some gold coins, which you're obviously very familiar with, or some bullion, uh, you can sell it no matter what the currency of the gold coin is, it be a maple leaf or a Krugerrand or a gold sovereign. 
if you happen to be anywhere in the world, you take it to a dealer, he knows exactly the quantity of gold in it, and he'll give you the market price for it. Precisely. Anywhere, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in Correct. Australia, everywhere. Here in Russia, for sure, for sure, sure. for sure. So, uh, as far as Nabilina is concerned, you know, <clears throat> uh, as a central bank governor, she's coming for criticism only, not only on gold policy, but her policy on inflation going back uh, 10 years. Uh, has also got so you know. Let's move on from the uh, policy of uh, Navalino on gold to simply it is nonsensical. So we we pretty much covered that, and let's look at gold in Russia. And recently, as you know, uh, the Russian government took the twenty percent VAT off of uh, gold purchases, yes. Yes. coins, and bullion. And from what I understand, just from one bank, they sold 20 tons between April and uh, September. Yeah, which, from, yeah, yeah, from March to September or something like that. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes. Which is not an inconsiderable amount of physical yeah. gold. That's quite a uh, quite quite a hefty uh, pile. Let me put. Yeah. Well, if you take at market prices of uh, let's say seventeen hundred dollars to the ounce. Uh, you look and it's 56 million dollars to the ton. Uh, you're looking at about five to 50 to 600 million dollars worth of gold that has been just shifted in such a short period of time. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and then some other banks were also given um, reports about selling one and a half ton. And yes, yes, and the, 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 there are people talking. Mm, in the media a little bit that there is a heightened interest in gold coins and gold bars among Russians. It's it's not a mania, far from it. It's not a mania, yeah. but uh, yeah, well, yeah there, we, is, there is. I think both of us and uh, can understand why. We're both old enough to have survived the 1990s when the Russian currency was debased not once, not twice, but three right, times. Right, right. And bank accounts were wiped out, uh, savings were wiped out, etc. And Russians have had uh, a tendency to hold bullion, to hold currencies like the dollar, the euro, and in cash under the mattresses, because you know, quite justifiably they weren't over enamored and trusted uh, with the banks that currently exist. So uh, the ability to buy a tangible like gold bullion in small bars or in coins is something that obviously they're, they're looking to do because it's a store of value. And yeah, as precisely. you know. From time immemorial, uh, gold is going to always going to hold its value. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And Russians still uh, there is uh, this move towards gold. It's been on and off for years. Russians, as of October, hold about 15 trillion rubles in cash. You know, there, there was this mm -hmm. new new piece of stats like a couple of weeks ago. So there is a huge space for them to to go on deeper and deeper and deeper. It's just like they they just scratching the surface. By the way. Talking about gold in Russia, we, I believe, should mention your uh, latest uh, research report on uh, the state of Russian uh, gold industry. Uh, yes, uh, I recently, uh, Dima, as you know, completed a report called uh, the Russian Gold Report, which looks back at Russia since uh, uh, the end of the Soviet Union and how its gold sector has developed through to the current uh, present day. Uh, it's a comprehensive in-depth that looks at the companies, the regions, and all aspects of the gold sector in Russia. Uh, it's got a lot of stats, it's got a lot of facts, but it's also got a lot of very, very useful information. Uh, the details can be found at the, uh, underneath this broadcast. Right, 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 right. Uh, in the but description. You, yep. Yeah, in the description box. But it's at Gold Insight Russia. You can find full details of it and a short biography of myself. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we, we, we'll, we'll talk more about your experience in Russia for sure in our future programs. But uh, yeah, I, I do recommend it and I had a sneak peek and it's it's really interesting. See, I, I follow, uh, I, I run a Russian language uh, gold news website for, for, for like more than 12 years. And I, I'm very well familiar with uh, all kinds of research. And this piece is really, it, 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 it is value, it is value. I'm, 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 it's my expert opinion. So yes, yes, please, please uh, check it out in the description below. So basically, uh, the thing about Russia is gold uh, as an industry is 
probably is actually the second largest uh, income generator for uh, Russia, uh, apart from oil and gas. It makes more money and profitability than the steel, aluminium, uh, or even the nickel industry. It makes Russia around 20 billion per year. Yeah, it's not a high profile industry, and it's actually only really taken off <coughs> since the year uh, 2000. Yeah. yeah. Prior, prior to that, in the 1990s, gold mining in Russia was in the doldrums. It was still living on the legacy of the Soviet Union. And there had been a complete lack of investment uh, in the industry in po the post-Soviet space. Uh, none of the major companies uh, that exist now, uh, Polis, uh, Polymetal, Highland Gold, uh, uh, Petropavlovsk, which was Peter Hamrell Mining, so none of the major uh, companies, uh, and two of them, like uh, Polis and Polymetal, are in the top 10, 12 global mining companies actually existed back at that time. Mm, mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been, it, it, it's been like like many things in Russia. It's been like moved back in in, in the corner, and it's uh, yeah, unnoticeable completely. And it's 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 still in the in the, um, it's going over this growth phase, and it's still very undeveloped. I would say, do, do, I would don't say, you think? Yeah, I, very much so. I mean, uh, Sukhoi Log is the largest undeveloped gold mining mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> project that's. Uh, it's currently coming to the uh, to development and fruition, and it it'll land. To Polos, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was uh, obviously uh, it started off uh, as a Polis and uh, uh, Ross Geology uh, uh, joint venture, which is a government organisation. But then, if you read my report, you'll see how certain sleight of hand movements, and it was actually almost gifted to uh, Polis Gold. These uh, the gold industry, uh, the government, and the banks in Russia work very much hand in glove with each other, which is right. what makes the Russian gold sector very unusual, as in there was only one global player uh, from outside Russia uh, involved in Russia, which was Kinross Gold, and they pulled out recently because of sanctions. They were the only one that actually had a foothold in, in Russia. And that's very unusual because the Global mining giants are in South Africa, Australia, Canada, South America, Africa, etc. But they never, ever really managed to get a foothold, mainly because of the laws here in Russia, which uh, every deposit above a certain level, which is 50 tons of gold, <clears throat> uh, is considered of serious national importance which means that companies that are wholly owned or majority owned by foreign companies uh, cannot actually participate in auctions for them. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it, it is all, it's, it, it is this, uh, those leftovers from the Stalinist era, gold is the, uh, what they call the national security interest industry, and it, it's all, the, the legislation is still very, backwards, uh, when it comes to owning gold, you know, there are so many you're you, you correct in owning gold mm -hmm. and how the, the industry works, but to an extent, I think that uh, other countries uh, have got it absolutely wrong and allowed their gold and their profits and everything from it uh, to actually leave. If you look at uh, the Kumtor gold project in Kyrgyzstan, which is obviously a neighbor of Russia, right. uh, that's been... Uh, exploited for an, quite a number of years, and um, the Kyrgyz have made minimal amounts of money in license fees, and the Canadian uh, Centera Gold has made billions out of it over the years. And it's also done some environmental damage, it's also uh, done some uh, pretty horrific s stuff over the yeah, years. Yeah, there's been a scandal uh, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know, I can understand why <laughs> national importance and national champions uh, are important. It's just a matter of uh, how it's done for the benefit of the people and not the benefit of the companies, the banks, right. and certain right. insiders within the government. Yeah, 
you're right. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, we'll say no uh, ruthless exploitation by the imperialists for sure. Yes, we will. We'll fight against it. But uh, it, th there is still space for uh, modernization in that area. And absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I agree. I mean, uh, within the uh, mining sector, there were a large number of the. Uh, Western technology companies, Western uh, engineering companies, software companies who'd expanded into the space. I mean, for example, within the uh, mining trucks and mining equipment sector, uh, it, the majority of the equipment uh, is imported from uh, China, from America, from, from Europe. Right, right. So, right, right. and that is actually going to have to be addressed simply because of uh, a number of them have pulled out because of sanctions. Right, right, right. And also, there is very this very curious thing uh, we were talking before the program about how shy Russian gold miners are, like people who run companies, who uh, the the owners yes. and the top management. Uh, like when when you look at uh, say Kitco a YouTube channel, you always hear that when, when there is. Uh, when there is a guy from the gold mining industry coming on, he goes like, there is going to be a crash of the dollar system within the next three months, hyperinflation, all that. And in Russia, it's, it's like, it's, it's the complete opposite. You know, that, that's, it's, it's so ridiculous. They're, they're, people are a bit, uh, you know, it, it, it is a strategic uh, area of strategic interest for the Russian state. So the, 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 the top management and the owners, they're a bit scared a little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 incredibly camera shy when it comes yes, to yes. Uh, <laughs> being involved in uh, discussing anything major as far as the industry is concerned. They, yeah. they do have the odd sort of small conference, where they, which I, I have attended the odd one, and they just tend to be a back-slapping, self-congratulatory event where they talk in, you know, oh, oh, aren't we all doing very well? Isn't the world nice? And, you know, isn't everything yeah. nice? And perhaps if the government could just lower the uh, fees that we have to pay for them for royalties and cut our royalty tax, because we're working in very difficult conditions in the far north uh, of Siberia. Yeah. And it's really tough for us because we only made five billion last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's, what's the, they're like rolling like we say like cheese and butter here, right? Yeah. yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. They're, they're making out very well. They're not... Definitely not a non-starvation diet. These people. There, there, there was this. Uh, there is this guy. I'm not going to name names, but he's uh, he's one of the uh, like uh, uh, top uh, people in the Russian gold industry. And I was I was publishing his uh, gold forecasts for like uh, something like a couple of years ago, and he forecasted the price of gold for 2024 at. Like fifteen hundred US, which is so unusual for for a gold miner to be saying that gold will fall in five years. Everyone's going to say, "Oh, it's going to be fifty thousand bucks," and you know, every the, the, the West is going down. And here in Russia, it's just uh, yeah, they're very very shy people, very timid. You know. The, yeah, I, I, I'm also uh, they they tend to always look on the dark night. They, yeah. Uh, there's always uh, every. Cloud is black, not has a silver lining. Right, 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 right. No, no, no. You, you, yeah, you, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. So the the market for gold, Russia, over the last few years, as you mentioned earlier, the central bank was the major buyer of gold, uh, or if they weren't the major buyer, uh, it was sent to uh, the London Bullion Market Association. Uh, for trading, etc., or sent to Switzerland, etc. At the imposition of sanctions back in uh, March, sort of at the end of March, beginning of April, the LBMA put an uh, embargo on all gold that was smelted in Russia and uh, couldn't be shipped to the LBMA for good delivery status. This kind of uh, took the, the Russians uh, kind of uh, uh, aback. I mean, because they are pretty much focused uh, on being uh, members of the LBMA and shipping their gold to the uh, Krasbet Met, which is the major uh, smelter of gold and of right. precious metals in Russia. Right. And they would then ship it on to, to London for trading, etc., or through their various channels. So that took the uh, the Russians uh, uh, by taking pretty, pretty much a bag. And there was this piece by the uh, head of the 
union of Russian gold miners, uh, who said the Russian government needs to buy gold as the Russian gold miners are having problems. And yeah, yeah. And Nobody so wants gold. to buy it, you know. I who mean, it's gold. I mean, come yeah. On. I mean, yeah. You know, the the as though Russia <laughs> is the second largest producer in the world. There is a demand for gold uh, that is certainly more than its own mine demand every single year. And yet they were one. I mean, all you had to do was look at where the major buyers of gold are. And they're not the LBMA and they're not COMEX. They're in the Middle East through the Dubai Gold Exchange, or et cetera. They're through India, uh, through the Shanghai Gold Exchange, et cetera. I mean, within the Shanghai uh, exchanges, and there are a number of them, through the oil exchange, they were actually offering uh, to sell uh, gold yen uh, in exchange for oil. So you could actually take either physical yen or physical gold in exchange for oil in trading to for countries who wanted to get away from the dollar. Now, anybody who reading the financial newspapers would have been familiar with that. And as soon as they fell that this was coming, uh, you start looking at other markets. I mean, yeah. just look, look off the top or the head. Who is the biggest gold market in the world? In India. my opinion, it's India. Yeah, you're right. right. I mean, I read the statistics. It's 25,000 tons of gold in private hands in India. That's not central bank holdings. That's individual <laughs> people. Here and a population of five, six hundred. Well, what's India's population? Eight hundred. One point three or something. Is it one point three? Yeah. That yeah. means practically everybody's got <clears throat> uh, at least a sizable amount of gold. So you would think that the uh, gold mining companies would have been on the telephone, uh, been on their private jets or whatever, and gone to Shanghai, to Dubai, to uh, New Delhi, or to uh, Mumbai, where Mumbai is a major center where the yeah. uh, Bombay Stock Exchange is and the, the Bombay Gold Exchange is now, and, and organized their, their way through of selling their production. I mean, I ran into a guy at Minex in 2018, Indian guy, and he said, do you know what, I can buy 300 tonnes of gold. And I said, do you realise that's almost the total Russian yeah, production? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I introduced him to a guy called John Mann, who was a director of Highland Gold, whose annual production was only 15 tonnes. Yeah, Highland Gold is, 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 it was small and is small, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, but it's still in the top six <clears throat> gold producing companies in Russia. So 15 tons uh, per year uh, is not, I mean, that in monetary terms is about 700 million. Right, 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 right. So, no, it's, 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 it's just ridiculous, ridiculous, yeah. really. Exactly. You, you cannot... So, uh, yeah. This is where uh, the, the, the Russian gold sector uh, acts like a cottage industry, even although it's a 20 billion a year industry. And with a huge potential, too, because the, the, the role of gold will only, you know, grow. Absolutely. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, uh, I mean yeah. gold has l lost a lot of its luster uh, through government uh, and central banks trying to basically say, well, gold, you don't really need gold, it's not an instrument, it's something. Uh, Sidelining it, simply because they know that if people hold gold, they, they hold gold because they mistrust currencies, and they mistrust banks, and they mistrust governments. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure, for sure, for sure. There is, there is space, there is space. I don't understand why Russia being... Uh, like the, the we are in um, like running head to head with Australia as second or third uh, world's largest gold producer. Why don't we have an analog of LBMA in Moscow? Well, like we have office buildings, we have internet. So why why be yeah. dependent on? Yeah, I don't understand that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, absolutely. I mean, uh, in Saint Petersburg, they have a petroleum exchange where they yeah. exchange petroleum, oil, gas, etc. Uh, and there's nothing to stop, uh, like the London Metals Exchange, Russia is a major producer of nickel, copper, 
etc. So there's nothing to stop Russia land trading with their countries that are not part of the uh, G7 uh, and the Five Eyes, which basically covers, you know, I mean, if the EU doesn't want to trade with Russia to their own detriment, there's still another 160 countries around the world, yeah, yeah, it's called yeah. the UN, that they can trade with. And having a facility and a mechanism to do that uh, makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. And, and it's not something, I'm a, it's not like a flight to Jupiter or something, you know, it can be, can do it. Yeah. It's very doable. And also, uh, you have to look at the organizations that have been developing. So perhaps that is going to happen. But whether Russia is at the forefront of it or one of its uh, fellow members of BRICS or the SEO uh, are doing it. I mean, China's taking the lead. It's got the Shanghai Gold Exchange. It does all of the various things through its BRIC Road Initiative, etc. You know, Russia does need to be a bit more proactive. In Precisely. Yes. Yes. To to put it mildly, all over again, they need, they need a kick in the you know in the yeah. bottom. The yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, to yeah. continue to develop uh, the the whole market. Yeah. This is the very. See, see, uh, our dear viewers, this is a very Russian conundrum. By the way, our program is called Conundrum. Yeah, I forgot to mention at the beginning, but yeah, here it is. Uh, Rod came up with the name. I think it's a great title, yeah, because it's it's a bit of a you know this um, Churchillian thing about the mystery wrapped in, in the enigma and all that. That's very that's very much about us. Uh, the, uh, Russian state is R Russians are shy about themselves. Uh, they they have inferiority an inferiority complex uh, as compared to the West. So this is why these this silly this silliness. You know they cannot. It's like it's a technical thing basically. Just do it and you will raise the profile of the country inside the country as well. Ordinary Russians will appreciate it too. You know it's big gold is a big thing. Everybody knows that Russia. Um, mines gold. The, the old, uh, every Russian knows. So I mean, why not do it? Why not do it? It's yeah. That's um very Russian thing. Okay, you know? Dima, we hit thirty minutes, so let's cut there and we'll stop for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Wait. All right. So uh, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Done. All right, uh, so uh, uh, our dear viewers from all over the world, we're hoping, I think we, I believe, uh, we have had a great conversation with Mr. McKenzie. Uh, and um, yeah, this is our first episode uh, of Conundrum, of the Conundrum or Conundrum. Uh, I'm going to have it on my website as well, the link and the, the video, and of course, all the info that you need, you can find in the description. And we promise to be back, uh, talk more about Russia, because uh, Rod has a wealth of experience of Russia. He has a, has a unique perspective as a Western businessman mm, uh, who resided in Russia for years, for, for decades. So he, he's got a lot to tell you. And I'm, I'm a local, you know, so I got my own perspective. So yeah, we're going to continue. Uh, please subscribe, like us, and uh, Share the video with your friends and uh, neighbors. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. McKenzie. Thank you very much. Look forward to having a chat with you at some point early next week. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. -bye.